Hey, Lena. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. The cold, rainy, bleh, cold day today. One of those to the bone chill type of weather. Uh, is my sound okay? Just let me know. I think the lighting looks pretty good. Hey, Joan, good to see you. Hope your weather is good where you are. Sounds good. Okay. Awesome. So, just thought I would give you a little bit of an update on I missed a day of my um, painting a day. Uh, but I thought I'd show you the last couple ones that I've done. This is... Uh, It's, a, uh, what's it called? Shading Gray I used. I did quite a few of these oh, quite a few years back of um, just using Shading Gray because it's a very transparent, uh, it's golden um, high flow acrylics. So you can put it on um, with water and uh, make it different shades of gray. And then you can multi-layer it. So if you want a little more of a mm, darker area, uh, you can add more pigment load to it by not diluting it. Um, it doesn't go black, black, but uh, you can use, you know, an acrylic black and uh, put in those really dark darks. And I did forget to put the little highlight in the eye. <laughs> so I thought I'd do that. And then I used, oh, I don't have it down here. Um, this is that, uh, oh, what's it called? It's from Japan. It's an ink, actually. It comes in a kind of a squatty little um, square bottle. Um, actually, I think Dee Dee has some, too. I think she used it. Um, but I really enjoyed doing these. Um, it brought back some great memories <laughs> of me doing them. Uh, oh, I know. I think I have them here. Mm, yes, I think they were in this book. I'll show you in a minute. I just want to put a highlight in here. Well, thanks, guys. So today I thought I'm, I'm all about, uh, let's see. Let's put it right, just a, oop, too big, too big. Get a, yep. I just want a little dab, like that. Oh, something crashed. Oh, it's just a spray bottle. All right. So, um, what was I saying? <laughs> My brain is all over the place. So, I really like that kind of uh, abstract look of just throwing some brush marks on the uh, painting. And I did a bit of uh, kind of a sienna color in the background before I did the base. So I think I might try some more of these. I like doing them. Um, I'll show you what I mean about the ones I, used, I did a while back. I think they're in here. Yeah. These are using the shading gray. These were done 2014, guys. Wow. Almost 10 years ago. That's crazy. But I used a pen and I used a little bit of color. And this was on top of a gessoed uh, over collage of just scripts, different types of scripts. And um, now these aren't the best, but 
and I did some stamping too on these. I loved doing these. And this is just a composition book. So you don't need expensive journals if you're going to be doing this type of thing. And I do believe I, did I? I might have glued two sheets together to just to give it a little bit of strength. And then um, I always like to have some kind of meaning or emotion when I do uh, paintings or drawings. So this one to me looked like somebody staring out the window waiting for their husband or boyfriend or child or whatever it may be, or waiting for spring, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Um, and that, of course, the the typical um, grains of sand slipping through your fingers like time. No, oh, thanks, Lena. Kind of a, th this kind of guy kind of reminds me of a CIA agent or something. <laughs> That's by just keeping an eye out and then uh, late night so she's kind of a little bit <laughs> that look on her face oh what did I do last night <laughs> and really that kind of yeah really and um, just questioning things well, I think I have a little bit of Oh, it might be the paper behind here. Yeah, it is. Some of the paper has gone yellow, but it kind of looks cool. So just a touch of color to these. And it seems to really, I don't know, I like that look. Hey, Dot, good to see you. Um, a stressed out person. It says I can't pay my whatever it is. Um, strobe moon sleep. He's deprived of sleep. <laughs> and I see I added little bits of a stamped, it's actually stamped a tissue paper. I like doing that because then you can still see through the tissue paper if you happen to have uh something behind it that you want to show through but you still want the stamping try that uh, get your stamps out and stamp on a whole bunch of tissue paper and then you can use them in this way uh, harpoon the world <laughs> these are just things i got out of uh, some magazines words you hold my soul it's kind of love struck. And then that was, um, this is actually gauze on there. So I actually did <laughs> wrap his face in gauze. And that was the end. And then I didn't do any more of them until this lady here. So I might do some more. Maybe I'll just do them in the journal. I don't know. We'll see. But there's no collage on this one. But I... I think I might, in my um, coming up days, add some collage to my canvases and, and start painting on them that way. Because I like that look. And this was the one I did yesterday. And kind of Christmassy, winter, a little mysterious door in the middle of the woods. Um, actually, when I showed this to my son, he said... That's the night aired before Christmas, I guess. I've never seen the movie. So I guess there's doors in a woods that they find or something. I don't know. But okay. So there's my version. <laughs> I think it's cute. And um, I have some uh, a bunch of uh, little, uh, what do you call them? stands for plates that sit on your table or or pictures and I thought I would um, have them sitting on my um, different side tables or wherever even on you could put them on a, a fireplace and then 
you know, you arrange stuff around them and change them up for the sea, the season. And um, so you'd have a picture for whatever season or um, holiday or whatever. I thought that would be kind of cool. A huge tree with a door into the trunk. One for Easter, one for Christmas, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, you could even make your own um, kind of like a tripod, actually, uh, where you rest. I wish I had brought one down. Um, I, had, I bought a bunch of them because I was going to give some out for gifts. And uh, I thought it would be a cool idea. And you could put any kind. Um, that's my fox we did last, was it last week, I think? And there's a traceable for this for all the members, if you want to check that out on Patreon or on the um, join that's just down <laughs> there somewhere. You'll Beside my name, you'll see a join button and you just press that and it'll take you to all the information about the different levels and the uh, patreon is the same as this one here it's just that some people prefer patreon over a youtube membership so i'll leave that up to you so oh uh before we start actually let's just keep this here i have some coarse pan pastels here this is kind of shimmery i don't know if you can see that or not um i did come across some generic soft tools and i bought one pack came with uh, actual two um, handles also and it was three bucks for two handles in this pack so i thought okay that's worth the try because the soft tools are expensive. So you get uh, four, and I think, let's see, there's no price. Oh, 10 covers, number four. And I think they're like $15 for these. And they um, can get used up fairly quickly. They're not um, something that you can reuse for a long time because they start to tear. So I thought I would try these and see if they're any good. So let's, take, uh, I have some different colors here. Let's see. Oh, here's the pan pastel in an extra uh, a light gold. We'll just try and see what kind of, um, we'll just get a piece of paper. Oh. Let's see what kind of, uh, now normally you just press. Now this is. Okay. Let's try this one. Uh, let's turn it around. And let's see what kind of... Well, it's about the same. Hmm. Okay. Let's try a different color. Let's see if I have... Um, I'll get a, another color, just plain pastel, and see what possesses the sparkly ones. Sometimes they don't um, measure up the same as a plain pastel. So let's get one of these out. Because right. if they are cheaper, then I'm going to buy a whole bunch of them because crazy the price of things you get the handle with it to boot okay so here's some um what's this one this one is orange extra dark 
So if I just tap, yeah, that's nice. And here's this pan pastel one. Tap. Hmm. Interesting. Let's try this one again. You know what? They're the same. If not, this one might be a little better. So I think these are great. So that's a good find. It's only, you know, they were only like three bucks for, I don't know how many you, you get in there. A lot more than what you get in the kind of pastel one. So they're... Good, good price and mm, I don't know what they called them um, but I did get now everyone's going to go oh you shouldn't buy from them Team you is where I got them so I want to try I wanted to try it out and see what they were like and I like the handle on this one better. So there you go. I leave it up to you if you want to find them. I need to catch up on downloading the traceables. Oh, there's a whole bunch. Um, tons of them. Um, this is our one we're going to do today. And it's of this deer. And we're going to do it in watercolor and probably a little bit of gouache. I'm going to turn down the, looks like it's a little bit bright for you guys. Exposure. Close that. There, that's better. So we're going to get, uh, probably do the snowflakes in a gouache, maybe some of the tree um we'll see and i'm going to be using my sketchup sketchbook for this one not watercolor paper so my sketchbook and i already drew it out so i didn't have to waste your time doing that Side there, just putting that in front of me so I can see the colors. Winter ones are really fun to do because uh, now I scaled this down. Um, what you'll get is this in the traceable. So, this basically is all you're going to trace is the deer. You can try and do some of the um, foreground trees if you want, but. I'll show you how I'm going to do them. They don't have to be exact. The only thing that you have to pay more attention to is the shapes of the deer. So just, uh, I would print out two, one for the reference and one to draw on. Hey, Dar. So I think, yeah, you guys can see that pretty good. Well, I'm going to turn my other light on too. Let's let um, shadow now. All right. Um, all right. So, as you know, this is just plain sketchbook. It's not watercolor paper, but it's good enough to do wet media on. And, um, believe I put uh, I put the it's from Amazon I put the link in a couple videos back 
on the watercolor videos of where I got them. It was on Amazon, and I believe you got two or three, I can't remember now, um, for, I think it was $15. And there's 200 sheets in each. So 400 sides, I guess you could say. And it's, it's good paper as far as uh, wanting to um, do a little bit of mixed media. I wouldn't consider this a great paper for watercolor. I've been so busy making selections for the house that I'm also behind on watching videos during art. Videos can't wait. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I've been there. That's a lot of work, decisions, and then <laughs> I, uh, well, I assume that you're having a builder do yours, but, um, when I built my house, my husband was the builder. <laughs> I drew up the plans because I took drafting in school. And then uh, he built it. And it nearly drove him nuts because <laughs> he would be putting up the walls. And I'd go, I'd go looking through at, at it and thinking, no. I think that needs to be wider. <laughs> and I'd have them tearing down walls before it was even built. <laughs> but hey, that's what you get when you have somebody uh, <laughs> do the plans. But yeah. <laughs> but I got the house I wanted, that's for sure. Um. <laughs> it was fun. I enjoyed it. It took a long time to do, but because we were doing it, subcontracting. So I know all about it. Probably even a little more. <laughs> all right. So the background is very misty, very atmospheric. So it's fairly light on the top part in the center here. Um, the sides, of course, are the loaded down with snow trees of some sort, um, spruce or um, pine, whatever. So I just want a bit of this color, more or less. I can. I'm going to go right over top of the trees because the snow uh, would be more or less the shadowed um, areas and we can always go back over top of it with some wash so and I just have some spare and I think it's ultramarine blue and maybe some um, could be cobalt blue on my palette already and I'm going to use that up and I'm just going to go over top of that area. Now, because this is a uh, sketchbook paper, um, I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow in there and right in here. And under here where the trees would be. And right underneath him, or her, no, I guess it would be him. He's got the rack on. And we'll be a little shaded underneath his legs here of this snowy color. And this is um, cobalt blue that I'm using. And then just a bit running into here like that I don't want hard lines and then some of the ultramarine blue I'm just going to put it over here it's very loose Get add a little bit of the cobalt blue also because 
it'll give it a little bit more of a darker color in there. Like that. And I'm going to let that dry now. So I'm going to take a hair dryer or my heat gun and dry this. I shouldn't complain. I feel very fortunate. I just forgot how stressful all the permit decisions are. Permanent. Oh, yeah. Permit says. I want this good and dry before I put another layer on because it's not sketch or it's not watercolor. So if I put too much water and scrubbing on it, it's going to fill. All right, so I'm gonna put the big brush down and I'm going to get the smaller brush out. And this is my silver black velvet number six. So in the background, I just want a hint of background trees. So we're going to use the same blues. Uh, but fairly watered down. And we're just going to kind of do a, the contour of the tree uh, and just fill it in. And it's not real detailed or anything. And the further back, the less detail, and then uh, the less... Um, color differences that you can see in the tree. So we're going to put a smaller one in here. And I'm just swishing my, it's going to be a another spruce. I'm just sweeping my brush back and forth. And I'm not going to go over top of the deer's body because it would show because watercolor is very transparent. It's very, very, very light. If you have any questions, uh, make sure you just put it in uh, caps and that way I'll know it's a question. And you don't have to worry if you think you're yelling at me, you're not. Let's put another one in here. So again, it's very Spruce are very spiky looking. This one's in front of this one. So you can get a little bit more color differences because it's up closer to you. I'm going to even add a little bit of this Payne's Gray in my mix. It makes it a little bit darker. Like that. Okay. But it's still fairly uh, light. And then we'll add a little bit more um, back here. We might do some, a uh, little bit of reverse painting. I'm just going to go around the body, this light blue color. It's still very, very light. 
I want him to show through, but I don't want it to overwhelm the deer's um, presence in this. I want more of the focus to be on the deer than anything else. Just a few more darks in here. Might be even uh, clouds or, mm, you know, just have to play with it. See what, what you like. If it doesn't work out, oh well. Now you know, now you can try again. And usually if you try again, it works out more. Because you know the things you don't want. Uh, very, very, very light in some areas because we have a little bit of the snow in here. And we can put uh, gouache on a lot of this too. So don't get too upset if it's not looking quite right. Putting a little bit in there. Like that. All right. Yeah, it's a, such a nice blue. Can you see it? Or do you want me to um, go in a little bit? Let's see if I can move in. A little bit better so you can see what I'm going to do with this guy. Um, paints over a little bit. There. All right. So now we can uh, do a little bit on the deer. Now the, the horns are going to be, or the rack or whatever you want to call it, are going to be in a um, Payne's Gray. We're going to put a little bit of Payne's Gray in this for our darkest uh, shadowed areas. What colors did you use for the blue again? Uh, it is Cobalt Blue by Windsor Newton and Windsor Newton French Ultramarine. So the blue... Blue is, that's the French Ultramarine. And then this color is the uh, Cobalt Blue. You're welcome. Okay, so while that's drying, we'll um, put in some of the detail in the buck. We have a little bit of Payne's Gray. Or you could also use indigo. I have Windsor & Newton Payne's Gray here. I'm going to put it just right here. Very, very, very powerful. So you don't need a whole lot. So, let's start with the rack. And I have water on my brush. And I'm just tipping the the tip in and right along the bottom is the darkest area. So you can do wet into dry. And right along the edge of this part here. And before that dries, you have a little bit of time to play with the um, blending, but not a lot. So now if you're using a uh, watercolor paper, you, you've got time. 
Another good thing to do if you're working on sketchbook paper is get another uh, brush with some clean water on it, and then you can switch back and forth. This one here. Antler's pretty dark right on the bottom. I'm going to go on up the side here. And some water on my brush and just bring it out a little bit. There's not a lot of, of color in their antlers. Uh, a little bit more on this one here. Here. You could probably um, wet your area a little bit too if you wanted to. Try and not get my sleeve in the paint this time. <laughs> Seem to do that every time I paint. It's a little bit darker in there. This top part is dark. It goes down. And then just fades out right there. And then the other part of the rack is more of um, a raw umber. So I have some raw umber here. I'm just going to put it over here. Raw umber, I find, um, has to be the number one color to get when you're doing nature. Because of the most birds and animals and even trees um, have a raw umber color in it. Seems to be a very natural color that you'll see. So the rack is this umber and the shadows are basically the Payne's gray. Now we'll probably go back and put a little bit of wash in the tips where the tips are kind of lighter color. And let's see. Now this paper, as you can see, it's starting to um, wick. That's probably because it wasn't quite dry. Just gonna put a little in there, there, that, that. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna give this a little dry because I don't want it wicking. Well, I guess it could wick and then look furry. <laughs> Maybe you've got. Um, the velvet one is black. I'll go with that. Sounds good to me. Okay. Now the um, the body is done basically with just areas of color. It's not necessarily hair you're looking at. You're looking at clusters of color that represent shadows or highlights, muscle tone, that type of thing. Um, so it's the highlights and the shadows that give your muscle structure, your body, to look 3D. So you got to pay attention to that. So it's not necessarily um, looking at the way the fur is running, except here. 
This is about the only area where you have to pay attention. So you see the strokes um, main here. But as far as the body itself, you don't see the direction of fur because it's shorter. So that saved you from um, having to worry about that. That can be a pain drawing all that fur. So we have uh, more or less a burnt sienna color, or you could go into a raw sienna with a little bit of burnt umber to it. Um, I'm going to use burnt sienna and just put some right here in this well. And a little bit of the darker, so a little bit of the raw umber, like that. So there's actually not a whole lot of color in this one. Uh, it's just uh, varying your water to the pigment. It's making it darker or lighter by how much water you put on your brush. So on the top of his head is darker. So I'm going to use some of this. This is the raw umber and a little bit of the burnt sienna in it. I just want it a little bit warmer. Get dog hair on my brush again. And just at the very top of, kind of in between his horns there. Not horns, rack? I don't know. Antlers, I guess. There's a, a little bit of a darkened area. And then a lighter, so I want to take some of this. And over his eyes is lighter. You can touch that that you just did. It'll lighten. Now, if you're using watercolor paper, you can sop away some of that. Um, you have to be fairly quick, though, if you're using uh, this type of paper. I'm going to put a little bit of dark in there. I think I need a little bit more. And just using the very tip of my brush. I'm going to let it kind of go down. And then as we get between his eyes, I'm going to take a little bit of this out. Or I mm, probably can't now. I'll use um, some uh, gouache over his eyes. It's actually white over his eyes. And a little bit of darker sienna color just in between his eyes a bit and then very 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 pale almost gray so I'm going to put a little bit of that Payne's gray in here just to gray this down and it's very watered down and I'm just going to go over the top of his nose with this color. And underneath his eyes, leave that white. And then over here, a little bit of that. And his muzzle is also white. And... Take some of that off. Just help with that little bit of um, can I get it off? A little bit. Just on the very top, you can take some of that off. But if you can't, we can always use wash. Okay? 
And then the inside of his ears are kind of uh, the same gray tone, but a little bit darker. I'm going to add a little bit more um, paints gray to my mix. And he's got fuzzy ears, so I'm just going to put some little stripes. There is a little bit of a lighter fur in there. And then just a smidgen darker right just right on the very edge of his ear by the top of the head. It's a little darker there. And on this side is a little darker. So I'm just dipping my, my brush in and just adding a little bit of that dark in here. That. Hey, Riri, good to see you. All right. And then his very, very dark eyes. So I'm just going to use that umber. I'm just going to put it over here. And the uh, Haynes Gray. Make a real dark, dark. So Payne's Gray and Raw Umber make a nice dark color, almost black. And just with the very tip of my brush and a steady hand. <laughs> Let's see if we can put his eyeball in here for a dot. She doesn't like when I do my eyes and leave them white. And then... They have a distinct look. The corner, inside corner of the eye kind of goes down. Like that. Okay. I'm going to leave the ears and let them dry a bit. Um, his his uh, chin is actually a little bit darker, so I'm going to take that gray we made. Just do his chin a little bit there. We'll do his nose once the top part dries. And underneath his chin um, is kind of a bluey color because it's shadowed. The white, he's got white underneath his chin, but the shadow makes it kind of a blue color. So let's do past that first. This is going to be very loose. So we want a fairly loose mix of that sienna color. Very watered down. And I'm just going to, even lighter than that, I think I'm going to put a little bit of raw sienna in there. Just to... Make it a little bit warmer. And I'm just going to flick it up. And we'll come back in with some other uh, colors. I'm going to mix a little bit of that Payne's Gray in my brush. And it starts to get a little bit of a shadowed effect on the very bottom part of that mane. And you can always come back in and make it a little bit darker if you want later. Let's put a little bit of this in here. Like that. You can even go outside the border, make it a little roughed edged, as you would be furry. And then a little bit of that Payne's Gray again with that Sienna color. 
just along that area where there's a little bit of shadow in there. And then I am going to soften some of this with a clean brush. I don't want really hard lines in there. And I want it a little bit softer in some areas so we can soften some of that. I might even just take gouache again over top. All right. So now sienna color, um, the darker. I'm, I'm not going to put a lot of uh, water in my brush. But I do want, it's more or less shadows in here. Just under his, his front leg, his chest area. There'd be uh, some shadowing in there. And along that mane, there'd be some uh, darker areas. But more of this color. Before it dries, I'm just going to soften the edge. Like that. Bring that up. And we can bring this a little softer down the leg. that and a little bit of that gray color again not much just along the outer edge here a little bit of shading I'm just touching the and let it it's still wet so I'm just letting it um, seep in there just to darken it a little bit Right in here along that mean, be darker in there. And make it a little darker in there. Put some streaks in there to represent the hair. And then again, the body, a little bit lighter in here, but I'm going to take this color, um, bring it down, clean my brush off, just with the water, bring it down the leg so it'll automatically get go lighter. Like that. And then it's very light around his stomach here. So just barely color in it. Um, there, it's darker underneath, but I'm just going to put this in here for now. And on his hind leg there and his rump. A little bit there. Bring it down his leg. It's very, very pale. You can do the same with the in the other side there, the leg. Saying the inside part. Like that. And then while that's still wet, I'm going to take that burnt sienna just under his belly and his, the front of his leg there would be darker. Like this. And then right in there. And his in, the inside of his leg would be dark. Back leg. Just take some water. Bring it down a little bit. And 
little bit of color in there. And then right by his rump in his stomach, it'd be kind of goes in a little bit there. Goes like that. And then it's a little darker on the top part. Right in here. It's not much, but it is darker. There's kind of a area here that's kind of fuzzy showing the I'm going to take a little bit of that um, paint gray, just right in here. I'm putting a little bit of that color along the edge of his belly and the leg there, because it would be fairly dark in there, down his other leg, and right there on his... It's kind of dark because it's shadowed by the body. Just a bit more on the belly. Right in here is fairly um, dark. And right in here, we'll put some more. Just clean up the edges. I don't want them real hard. And then I'm going to put a li little bit of uh, negative painting in here. Show the fur, kind of. Okay, a little bit of more color on this leg. Your your um, watercolor dries lighter, so you got to remember that. I don't mind that because I tend to um, go a little lighter than what's needed but I like that and I can just slowly work my way into the correct color you know what I mean darker in there that and maybe some of this here Okay, reindeers are so magnificent, aren't they? They are. I put a little bit more in there, it's brown. I think it needs it. As you can see, um, things lighten quite a bit. All right. So while that's drying, soften some of this. Let's do his little nose. We made a, a black here already. Let's put his little nose in here. 
That's kind of the little nostrils. Like that. And then there's a little And might have to go in with some. white but not bad all right and then a little bit of this body color along the edge of his ears on the outside and just on the top part and then this where the antlers attached to his head, that's lighter. All right. And I'm going to put a little bit of that. Um, I think probably ultramarine blue for the shadow under his chin. That. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, let's leave him for now and move on to the trees. Now, the trees are going to be, we could go about this in a couple different ways. So we're, we're looking at the foreground trees. So these, it's, it's kind of misty looking too. You can keep that if you want um, because I'm using scrapbook. It's a little bit harder to do that, but if you're you got uh, watercolor paper, it's much easier. Um, it's a, basically using your Payne's gray. So see these dark darks? Well, they're not really dark dark, but there's a difference in the hue. So right here, real dark, and then there's the white. So you can either leave the white of the paper, or you could use uh, gouache to put over top. It's up to you. Some people prefer using the white of the paper. I find it's easier to use gouache. <laughs> and we're going to put snow on here, little um, splatters anyways. So we want to make some darker areas on those trees. So that will be probably the French ultramarine. And Payne's Gray. You could mix a little bit of your French ultramarine here and there too. But there's more, I would say, more um, the other color of the French ultramarine. So... Let's do this one first. Um, I think let's try just doing um, the paint around first. Now I did make some shapes here. Um, if that's easier for you, you can do that too. And you basically paint the outer edge to your you're making a negative painting. And then take your 
you just take your uh, water and soften it. Soften the edges a little bit so they're not so hard. And that is your shadows that you're putting in. Some of them might be a little bit weird looking, but so and soften them up as you go. Don't leave them to dry because then they'll be hard looking. You want that atmospheric look, you, you need to soften them. And it'll be a little bit darker in certain areas. So you decide how you want to approach that. Where you want your darkest darks. If you want to follow the reference, you could do that too. Um, there is a uh, trunk that you can see through certain areas. Um, Depends on your paper. Uh, I don't have a lot of it in this one because of the size of my book, but you could put it in. Just make it soft looking, that's all. That's the main point, it's making it soft. And then a little bit of while it's wet, I'm just going to put this Payne's Gray in the where I think the uh, darkest areas would be. Be closest to the center of your tree, I would say. Because um, that's where less light would be coming. Remember, we're going to put um, gouache on this, so it might look a little weird, but don't worry about it. So once this is dry, we'll start putting the gouache on. But we want some of that dark area to be there. Because if it's not, then it, it doesn't uh, give the effect you want. Okay. All right, let's see. The other one. Have some really dark areas. You can even um, put some limbs. Show a little bit more limbs if you want. There's a lot of uh, shadow underneath the branches, so wherever the snow's piling, there would be quite a bit of um, shadows. So you can think about that. Let's do a little bit more in here. We can make some uh, a 
Got little branches sticking out here and there. That. that looks pretty good. All right. So let's dry that and then we'll use some gouache. Thanks, Joan. Thanks, Devin. All right, so I have some, well, that's extra fine artist gouache, zinc white. We'll try that. We might, let's see, we might need to get the actual titanium. because Zinc white is typically a little bit on the see-throughs. Um, white here. Oh, it's almost bluey though. Look at the difference in the color. We'll try this and if it doesn't work we can always use gouache to, or uh, acrylic. So so as you can see heavy loaded branches here and there. And some of them are back further, and you're seeing them a little more on the blue side. Now we'll see how this gouache reacts to the watercolor. A lot of times you don't have to blue it down. Thanks, Lena. A lot of times um, the watercolor will seep through your gouache and make it whatever color's behind it. Uh, so you just kind of have to play. And this is zinc white, which is a little bit on the see-through um, stage anyway. So we'll see what happens. Might just work for us without even having to do anything. And let's put one in here, kind of a and like I said, you could um, stick to your. Reference photo if you want. It's up to you. Whatever uh, you think is good. It's your picture. You can do what you want. You can also add more um, dark tones to this. Sometimes you need that. This one here would coming out a little bit more, maybe seeing more of the shape of the boughs of the 
it's fun to study trees when they have snow on them. It's different uh, looks for different types of storms even. Sometimes they look laden like this where there's huge amounts on them. Um, usually that's when um, you had a lot of snow but not much wind. You just play. That one more on here, maybe. And then we can also do the same on here, like we would have drifts of snow. So the top part of the snow that drifts is the, is the uh, brightest. Let's curl it around. Paper towel. Okay. Just going to take some water on my brush and move that snow a little bit, soften it. You know, always go back and darken things so snow's not um, hard looking. You want it soft looking. Maybe you'll have some um, hoof marks so. pushing the snow in front. I haven't got a reference for this, so this part I'm make, making up. <laughs> That's how you learn. Okay. Maybe a little bit going into the tree here. Softer. it would be a little bit colored. Let's make this a little bit a little softer in here. Not quite as as dark. That. 
Maybe right in here, a little more misty looking. Not so harsh. Okay. And let's see what else. Get out a little bit of highlights on the rack. So on the tips of their antlers, they're a little bit lighter. Make those just a touch lighter. You could do this with colored pencil too, if you wanted to. Um, and his, his little nose has a light spot on his nose. Let's see if I can get it right. And his eye shine also. Just a little glint and a little bit of, of a lighter area just in here. In the, inside his ear by the uh, just make some little streaks that uh, won't be uh, terribly um, bright because this is zinc white that I'm using. Uh, where else? Around his muzzle. Okay. So actually right around his nose. Is, is uh, lighter. I'm going to put a little bit more on the chin, like that. And over at the tops of his eyes is lighter. I might have to go back in with some black. Fix those up. That's okay. That's easy enough to fix. Okay, goes down. Ah. Okay. All right. Is that? Now we want to put some speckles on for snow. Now I'm going to use. Um, acrylic white paint I think for that um, actually I have some craft paint magnolia white that should do or let's see what I got here oh. white yep yeah. yeah. some titanium white I'm just going to move this aside for now. There. Do you want speckles? Snow to be in there. It's almost done.
And you want, I'm going to use this fuzzy brush here. And you want quite a bit of water on your brush. You want it kind of soupy. Clean water. Okay, and then you just tap. Depends how much you want. I like big ones and small ones. So make small ones you can use uh, a toothbrush I think I have one in here. Or maybe not uh, let's use a bristle brush it's usually um, better to use something a little stiffer let's see what I got here Uh, huh. I got this here. It's big, but we'll use it. Oh, no. And just splatter. So you got numerous um, sizes on your thing. All right, so let's try that and we'll see if we have to darken anything. Stop. <laughs> Thanks, Lena. See how the uh, snow kind of calms down when you're using a zinc. Uh, gloss tend to lose that bright bright that's a fix his eyes looks like he's winking <laughs> Got some pretty big splatters on this too. It'll take a while. You got a smoke like this. Yes, blizzard.
let it be. Now I can take a um, micron here. Let's see, this is probably too small. I want something. Okay. And try and stay away from my snowflakes. And put his eyeball in. Not too bad, maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, and a little bit of a shadowed area. This is a pen that's almost on its way out. Let's do top of his nose a little bit, a little darker, where his nostrils are. That, and his mouth. That. Maybe a few marks in his fur collar here. That. And put that white back in his eye. Let's see. Get enough white out of this one or not? Maybe, Maybe too much. We'll see. Ah, that's all right. And I think. I think that's good for him. Let's take our um, watercolor back out. And just in a few areas, darken some areas underneath that snow a little more. So right under the right underneath that snow area. Just bring it out. Don't leave it hard edged. Just bring it out. Where we think there would be um, shot more of a heavier shadow. Put this in. You can add a little bit of your um, Payne's Gray into that if you want. Sometimes you just need a little bit more 
So you just to give that um, dimension. That is probably one of the most important parts of, of art is having the right amount of contrast. Because if it's not there, then you're not giving it depth. And then it all looks the same value. And then your um, viewer's eye is just going to look at it for a second and then uh, nothing, nothing crazy here. And on to the next, whatever he's looking at. And you want to keep the eye looking at the art. And saying, that's amazing. I love that. So look at your contrast when you're doing this type of, uh, well, any art, really. Even um, abstract art has to be with the right amount of contrast for it to um, be pleasing to the eye. Um, I'm gonna put maybe a smidgen of white on under one part of his uh, fur there around his neck. Needs a oh, that's not it. His neck here, just a little bit right in here. Not much, but there is some. Just on the very edge, on the bottom, just a little bit. And this will probably fade again. Bring it up into that. And then just a smidge of that blue again, just around the edge of his mouth and chin. Just a bit. Just to bring that chin out. All right. And I'm thinking I'm done. Um, you could get your pencils out, colored pencils in white. Do a little bit of highlighting here and there. It's it's funny the the smallest little thing seems to give the the most impact when and it's usually the the slightest detail. And I guess that's why I love detail so much because there's such a big impact. Oh, thanks, Joan. Devin, thanks. I'm glad you like it. I hope you give it a try. So you can download this. So that's all you have to do is um, you can size this if you want to a larger, bigger, whatever. And then just trace around the deer. That's all you have to do.
You can do the trees too if you want, if you don't want to um, figure them out on your own. But yeah, I like him. I think he's cute. Let me sign it today. So it's 11, 7, 23. And that's the tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll give it a give it a go. See see what you can do with it. And uh, we'll see you on Thursday. And we'll be doing um, one of the painting a days. I'm not sure what yet. I usually figure things out the day of. <laughs> Well, thanks, Lena, for coming. And um, have a fantastic day. And if you're having nice weather, get out there and enjoy it. Because before you know it, that snow's going to be flying. <laughs> and you're not going to want to be going out too much. All right. I'll let you guys go. And um, for all my Patreons and YouTube join members, thank you so much for supporting my channel. If it weren't for you, I probably wouldn't be doing this. So uh, thank you so much. And we'll see you on Thursday. Bye for now.